looking for Bigfoot, UFO sightings, uh, Pokemon nests, or even looking for your car. Yes, all those features are actually available right in within Google Maps. So today, I'm going to show you the ultimate Google Maps 2018's tips and tricks. Let's do this. Hey, welcome to another Talking Tech with a Techie Guy. My name is Leron Segev, where I make technology simple. If you're into how-tos, gadgets, phones, tips and tricks, smash that subscribe button right here, and let's get on to today's show. So Google Maps is pretty powerful. Lots of features are available. So I broke this guide out into the desktop version and then the mobile version. The two work really hand in hand together, but there are some differences. Enough chit chat. Grab your popcorn. There's many things to go through. Let's get started. Okay, so I made a bit of an oopsie. I told someone we'll meet at the same Starbucks we met at last time. So I do a search for Starbucks and of course there's more than one. So now which one do I head out to? So what you do is you click on each one and what you're looking for is a little option on the left side that says you have visited this place before. You see this one says you have visited this place three months ago or two months ago and now I know that this is the same one that we met at last time. <sighs> Where was this tool when I was doing geography? So with Google Maps you can actually measure distance as well, not just driving distance. Simply right click on any point and choose measure distance and simply start clicking around and it will give you the distance from the first click to the second click. Uh, if I want to measure the perimeter around this particular location, click around it, gives you a rough estimate but it kind of links it up together and works out the distance between them. To get rid of that information, simply right click and then choose clear measurements and that's done. So I don't like to explore new places, to be honest. I like to go to a couple of restaurants that I know, the couple of places I know. Eh, well, that's just me. Okay, but what happens if you're forced to explore a new place, like you go traveling out of town and you need to find something to eat? So all you're gonna do is you select the area, select your budget, and click on more options. And here you can even limit it down to a type of cuisines you'd like to try out. Instead of just saying, restaurants what i can actually say find restaurants near me or find bars near me or find whatever near me and as soon as it sees the word near me it knows your gps location and only shows you things around your area that's pretty cool okay let's go visit some tourist attractions and take the little peggy man i don't know what you call him and drop this little dude on anywhere that's got a blue line and if you just hover above it, it will give you a little preview of where you're going to drop him. And when you do let go of him, it becomes a 3D photo. And of course, you can navigate around that. So this is where JFK got shot. The little X's on the road is where tourists normally take selfies. Another option is you select the timeline, the little clock here. And basically what it does is it shows you this particular image and going back to whichever year, day, month, the Google map drove past it and took a photo. Pretty cool if you're going to go to other places where you can see more than just cars. You can see buildings being built. It's actually quite a neat little feature. Okay, let's close that. Go back to our maps. And this time we're going to hit the satellite image on the bottom left. And what it does is it takes it out of map mode and puts it into satellite mode. Here you can actually see the physical buildings. You can see the road for what they look like in real life. This is pretty cool for planning. If you want to know where you're going and what's around you, use this as a feature. Now, if you select the 3D on the side here, use the control button to be able to navigate around. You can zoom in and out, but when you hold the control on your keyboard, you're actually able to pan and around a building. So this bit is gonna freak some people out. Go into the hamburgers and then choose timeline. Now here is basically every single time you've used Google Maps. But it also makes it a little bit worse because it actually logs all your destination as long as you had your phone with you. Yep, so this is 820 places I visited with my phone. Um, in fact, I can actually scroll to a specific day. Now watch this. This is when I went to go get my daughter from my friend. I didn't use the GPS at the stage because I know where she lives. So it still logged it on my timeline. So it's a little bit scary. Now, if you don't want that to happen, click the little gear icon and then you have an option there to pause the history. Click on that and basically you can stop Google from tracking your every move. Now, it does do this because I gave it permission on the phone 
and you do when you install the phone and most people just forget so you can always disable it there's no getting away from traffic you can get traffic everywhere but at least now we're able to kind of see the traffic and know which areas to avoid so go to three little hamburger lines and then choose traffic and now you can even play around with this and see what the traffic is typically like at any particular day during that week and even at a particular time so this feature is actually pretty cool click on the hamburgers and choose your places now essentially what this does it gives you the ability to take google maps but ignore everything else and pretty much customize your own map so that you can build an itinerary or you can build a places to visit map things that belong to you and what you're into so let me show you how to do that here I create my own map for my upcoming Thanksgiving road trip so I choose my hotel I find it on the map and now I simply add it to my own personal map after I've done that I can actually have the ability to go and give it a certain style I can put a certain color a certain icon and really essentially make it customized to the way that I want to consume my own information now, not only can you do that, but you can actually drop markers in points that you want to visit. And again, you can customize all that. You can get your directions from point A to point B, the one that you've just done. But here's where it gets really, really cool. It's in the sharing. So now that I've built my map, what I can do is actually send anybody the link and they can either be an editor or they can just view it. So I can share my upcoming road trip with my wife. We can make changes. Now to delete the map, simply click the three little dots and then choose delete map. Took me a little while to find that, to be honest. Okay, so when it comes to Google, you don't just have to use your own maps, but you can use other people's maps as well. So head up to maps.google.com forward slash gallery. And when you do that, you'll see a bunch of maps that other people have created and have actually made public. Now they cover some absolutely weird and wonderful things. I mean, come on, we all want to know where the latest Pokemon nests are located. And of course, we need to know where Bigfoot is and where the UFO sightings are. We need to, that's important information. They're all available here, just go and explore. Right click on a location, say directions from here, and then simply enter your destination. Or you can find your destination, and right click on that and say to here. So here's an example, we're going from this location to the airport, and of course you know that that's kind of the standard way that Google Map works. But here's pretty cool, click on options, and here you can say let's avoid tolls, or let's avoid the highway for example. And you can see it will update the time to it will take you to get from point A to B. Another point is you can say arriving by. Now this is pretty cool if you have to catch a very early morning flight. You want to know how early you should leave. So I say I need to arrive by a certain time. And now it tells me, look, if you want to arrive by that time in the morning, traffic could really vary between these time frames. You should really leave by um, 6.50, for example. Since I'm not going to have my laptop open as I'm driving, I can simply press the button, send the directions to my phone and then continue my journey using my cell phone. And speaking of phones, let's move across to the Google Maps on the phone itself and let's see what features are available there that you might not be using. Okay, we've done the desktop. You still with me? Let's move across now to the mobile. Couple of more features. Oh, by the way, give the video a thumbs up if you're still with me. Let's do this. So I tend to forget where I park um, pretty often. So I use this little trick. Basically, whenever I park, I tap on the little blue dot where I happen to be, and I click on save your parking. When you do that, it saves your location. I can even add additional notes, like things like, I don't know, parked under the big tree, for example. Um, I can even put in time left on meter in case this is a paid for parking. It tells me how long before my meter runs out. And I can even add a photo in case I wanna be extra cautious. And speaking of parking, you know if you're heading out to something like an attraction or a museum or a park, you're always looking for places to park and it's always an issue. What you can do is select your destination, select your route to that destination, then hit the three little dots on the top right and then choose find parking. Now what that will do is it will find all the parking places which are available around that attraction. So as we did before on the computer, what you can do is select your route to destination, then click the three little dots and then choose route options. And when you do that, you can avoid things like highway, tolls and ferries if your city happens to have them. If not, well, it's still there anyway. So let's say we're meeting friends at a particular location and we want them to know where we are so they know when to head out or meet us there. 
Press the three little dots to share your location and it lets your friends know where you are. Click on get started. And now what you can do is you can set the time. How long can I share my location for? For one hour or until I switch it off? And the way to share it is either via text message, you can share it via email, simply sends them a link and they can follow your movement on a map. And whilst we're in the sharing mood, select your route, press the three little dots, choose share your directions, and it actually lists your directions out in the text format so you can email them to somebody else as well. So they can also meet you. Now we take it for granted that we're gonna have internet access, but what happens if we don't? What you can do is use something called the offline maps. And what you do is you select your area that you want to be available when you're offline, when you don't have internet access. You can see it says 20 megabytes, you zoom out, it's going to use up 35 megabytes, zoom out even more, 45 megabytes on this particular location. But once I do that, I will have access to that map even when I don't have internet access. If you find that the blue little dot representing your location isn't 100% accurate, what you can do is press on it, press on calibrate compass and just follow these steps and it will recalibrate the compass, identifying you more accurately on the map. So if you're out and about and you're driving and you find a cool spot that you want to save or you find somewhere that you want to remember to come back and visit, simply hit on the save button and then you can add it to a list of places so you can remember to come back to them. So you can create your own list or choose one of the pre-installed one, add some notes to it and essentially keep a running track of places that you need to come back to. So Google Map integrates very nicely into Google search. So if you type in something like hotels in Las Vegas, what it will actually do is we'll go search those hotels, give you some pricing and give you some options. So here we go. I can choose things like the check-in dates. I can choose the star rating. I can choose all the information you would typically do on a TripAdvisor or a kayak.com website straight from within Google Maps. Sure, there was uh, quite a lot to cover. I hope you've learned something. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Consider subscribing if you're new here and watch some of these other cool videos. And I'll see you guys on the next episode because that's Tech Simple. Cheers for now.